Hey everybody. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear okay. you, I can't see you. I can't see, okay. You look, Sorry. You look pale. <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. <laughs> hey, Devin. Uh, how are you guys? We're good. pretty good. good to see you. Yeah, it's nice to Great. see you again. Good to see you guys, and thanks for doing this on, on short notice yet again. No worries. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah. We're obviously big fans of, of what you guys are doing, and uh, we want to take every opportunity possible to, to share it with the world. So I think this was a really good one. Thank you. Um, absolutely. So the, this this whole week is sort of focused on the oceans, um, and it was scheduled last month. Uh, but as we all know, a, a lot was happening in the United States, and it was important that we we took a moment to observe that and and uh, make make space for 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 that uh, situation. Um, the reason I think this conversation in particular is very important uh, along with the rest of them is the focus is often on the ocean below, like, b below the ocean, below the, the surface level, what's happening there, but you guys and what, what your work represents and often the people that you're, you're helping the ocean is something very different. It's a, it's a, it's a transit route and it's also um, often the difference between life and death. And so, I think telling that story and um, communicating that to the, to the many people that I think we'll have throughout the next um, the next few minutes on this conversation is is super important. So uh, to, to really start the conversation, I wanted to ask to to give everyone context: where are you and how are you doing? Um, and then if we can jump into when we band together, what is it and and how have you guys started it and what does it represent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. We're, at, we're actually in California right now. The last three years we spent in New York City and just last month, actually two weeks ago, our lease was up and um, it just felt like a good time to head back to see family right now. And so that's what we did. So we've been out at my parents' house in California the last two weeks and it's been really, really wonderful actually. So we're fortunate we've been safe. Um, we've been able to do our work remote. We have wonderful partners on the ground in Greece that has really, um, you know, been helping us push things forward. And um, overall, overall, we're, we're doing we're doing well. So thank you for that. And um, what yeah. was the follow up question? Uh, wh where where are you and how are you doing? And if you're if you're doing well, um, I'm I'm super happy to hear that. And I think. Okay especially in this moment where people have been traveling, what was the process like to get back to, I know you went to New York City and now you're in California. You were in Greece, I think when we last spoke. Can you tell us a bit about what that was like being there as COVID-19 uh, ramped up and, and what you put together at the Moya facility? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to take this? Actually, we haven't been in Greece since January. We spent the month of January. It's January, okay. And um, we left in January with intentions to build the community center. So we looked for land, found a building, and um, started working on that as we came home in February and March. And then as COVID quickly was traveling around the world, our intentions to build the community center changed, and we decided to look to partner with a medical professional NGO and turn it into a health clinic. Amazing. Yeah. So, so for the last three months, we've helped operate this COVID-19 isolation treatment clinic. We've been really, really lucky. Um, look, Moria has 20,000 people. It's built for 2,500, this refugee camp in Lesbos, Greece. Um, it has, it's famously or infamously unsanitary. It has several hour food lines. So it has all the things that would, uh, all the variables that would allow for COVID-19 to be really, really destructive and dangerous. Right. Uh, luckily, and I think, you know, it's one of those things like who knows what's good or bad. Like there was a bunch of volatility on the island before the COVID crisis hit. And so they really limited who was coming in and out beforehand. And I think it helped uh, the island and this refugee camp dodge a bullet because they haven't had any cases uh, in the, in the refugee camp. And so, um, and they're continuing because it's an island, they can monitor who's coming in and, and out really well. So uh, we're actually in the process of now repurposing that center. It kind of served its purpose in, in terms of in, ensuring, uh, ensuring that if there was cases, getting them out of the camp, isolating them and treating them. 
Right. Um, and now it looks like the island has a procedure where it can pretty much prevent in inbound uh, COVID cases. Amazing. And just to backtrack a bit, and, and for those that are just joining us, what is When We Band Together and, and why did you guys start it? Um, so When We Band Together is an organization we founded back in 2015. We were actually traveling at the time, and um, it was the height of the refugee crisis. There was over a thousand people coming in to Lesbos, Greece, and a few other neighboring islands every single day from the coast of Turkey, um, as well as into parts of Italy. And, such but we um we honestly we jumped over really naively just to see how we can help and it changed our lives we we stayed a, we stayed as long as we could over there and did as many things as we could not having any type of background in um you know in this and um we started when we band together to to help to continue as a way to continue to help uh, as we came back home to California, um, a way to, to bring resources to the refugees, a way to bring awareness back to our friends in America who are really oblivious to this, unfortunately. Um, and then in, in doing so, we were able to also, with, our, with what we thought of, we were able to also clean up the beaches and um, help the local people as well. Yeah, and when she says doing what we did, basically our, our means of driving funds back to the island and spreading awareness is we ended up making bracelets out of the life vests that the refugees were coming into the island uh, that started to become symbolic of the refugee crisis as a whole. And so Zoe really thought of the whole thing. So Zoe, Zoe thought of the idea to upcycle these uh, life vests, and then we found a local partner and hired seamstresses locally. The beaches, you know, when we talk about our relationship to the ocean here, you're right, it was such a mixed relationship. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, the ocean felt like the Grim Reaper. So many people were drowning even while we were out there. Uh, but at the same time, the locals' relationship with the ocean was uh, incredibly positive. The mm -hmm. ocean was a place where tourists would come. It's a tourist economy. And, you know, they would come, hang out at the beach, swim in the ocean, and right. uh, their beaches being littered with these it's a million plus life vests. There was over a million people came between 2015 and 2016. Um, was like this symbol of the end of like an era of, of positive income and, and a positive relationship. And so, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, the ocean is a, is a, is a is symbiotic with the local population of Lesbos and what it means both economically and people's relationship with it. They go swimming uh, in it. And um, even over time, you know, our relationship with this has changed in terms of uh, not just the bracelets and the upcycling, but even this new, uh, the way we're repurposing the uh, the, the health clinic is as a sports and recreation center. And one of the programs in that is swimming. And so the refugees come out and swim, sw swim in the ocean. And uh, so, so the relationship has, has really changed. And, you know, I, it, it looked, uh, it's funny how like visually it changes for you. Like when we were first out there, it looked great, but it looked scary just because of right. what was, you know, the moment. Um, and now, you know, it's back to the beaches are cleaned up and it's back to looking blue and pretty and you know representing fun right one of the most fascinating things about what you guys do to to us is that these camps exist and there's a community really within them and then you find these areas surrounding and you build those communities Yeah, it's, you know, I think we just found basically a hack. You can feel kind of helpless looking. Yeah, 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 we got it. Um, it, it can, you know, our, our, our uh, it can feel kind of helpless, you know, looking at these refugees. Oh. Yeah. Um, these refugees, uh, you know, camps uh, are often intentionally not well done to put it lightly uh they are they are intentionally dangerous intentionally unsanitary there is a prevailing ideology or thought 
uh, that if you make the immigration or, or asylum process so dangerous, deadly, scary, that word will get out that this is not the route to try and to do something else, go to another country, try another route. Um, and Moria is one of the clearest examples of that. You go from a place where there is, you know, open people living, you know, outside, walk, you know, I don't know, uh, it won't create to uh, community the process of finding really great amp, renting them out, and then turning them in. Yeah, unfortunately, because of COVID, the camps are still closed right now. And this is a, the country of Greece itself has opened up, but Moria camp is still closed. Hard as you can imagine. I mean, even even us around the states being, you know, locked in our homes. It's just, you know, if you can even fathom what they're going through right now. So uh, hopefully the camps will open soon and people will be able to move around. It. Amazing. You guys mentioned the the stigma currently in the US right now as, as it pertains to refugees. Obviously, there's the work you're doing on the ground and then there's the extension of that, which I think is, is often in, in the form of, of symbols that people can wear and, and take around with them so that there's a story to tell. And that I think is, is with the Zoe band. Um, what has that become and, and how have you seen that start to actually change the way that people are thinking about this crisis firsthand? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty powerful being able to wear you know, this piece of material that, you know, it's someone's story. It's what they put on, not knowing if they'd live or die. And I, you know, I, our hope, our hope is that people will understand, you know, what someone must be facing to make that decision. They're, if they're, you know, if they're choosing to put this thing on their son or daughter and go across the ocean, uh, knowing they might drown, how bad it must be there. The state, like, I think one of the narratives that's really dangerous, you know, that's been kind of the, the prevailing right, right narrative is like people are just going here for opportunity and, you know, they just want what your country has, they want your job, and not that, you know, th these people are facing overwhelming, overwhelming, you know, violent threats. And like, you know, the potential drowning did not discourage them. Um, and so that's a powerful thing to wear on your wrist and to think about every day. And I think it's, you know, at least we, we've gotten letters from people who have said like, hey, man, I still think about this every day. And the refugee crisis is, you know, if you're living in America, it is not on the news, you know, and it's, it's, it's fair. There's a lot happening here. You know, we understand how the news cycles work, but it's, right. it, it didn't get resolved either. You know, yeah. it, it, was, it was everywhere 2015, mm -hmm. 2016. Uh, at that time, there were 65 million refugees globally. Now there's over 72 million refugees globally. So we did not resolve it. The policies have gotten more cruel. You know, we did, you know, Germany stepped up that first year and took a million and the surrounding area, right. you know, the countries have taken a, a bunch, uh, but uh, it, it has not been resolved. And so it, it, it is part of our duty to keep spreading awareness. And, and that's what we're hoping the bracelets do. Yeah, right. and in, just in terms of oceans, I mean, the, the refugee crisis is not going anywhere with global warming. So yeah. this, this is only going to, this problem is only continuing. So such a good point. Absolutely. Those two, the people talk about that all the time, like the, the impending displacement of rising sea levels, um, you know, on islands, on, on coasts. Um, and so, yeah, in a lot of ways, you know, the refugee crisis and the climate crisis are like, symptoms of the same problem are inability to organize globally and put things yeah. in place globally because there's nothing that has like teeth that's a forcing mechanism that makes countries you know get in line with certain policies um and yeah the the, the longer we go without addressing them the more they're going to work hand in hand to increase the the issue right 
Do you guys have the Zoe bands on right now that you can show everyone? Mm -hmm. I have right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. No worries. We're just waking up here in California. <laughs> well, good morning and thanks for for joining so early. It is yeah, early yeah, there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Zoe's got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's very interesting the the point you make about um. I guess the level of trust in institutions at this point and the fact that the crisis has actually gotten worse and, and media just seems to crumble at the sight of something that is, it, it gets worse and it, and there's nothing, there's no good news to report. And so they sort of give up on it in a way and there's nothing yeah. else to report on it because they're exacerbated by it. Um, yeah, very difficult. I, and, you know, you guys are working on sustainable development goals. I, I, saw, I see that as a big part of you know, your messaging and everything. And it's not for lack of trying. Like the UN is bringing countries together to discuss this all the time. It's actually happening behind like closed doors all the time. These conversations on, you know, what we need to do and what the right policies are. Um, but we are, we are seeing, you know, we are seeing that as even the COVID stuff, right? It's like we, we have an inability to to institute policy on a global level that gets like buy-in mm -hmm. you know and to, to squash right. things so is that you want to show up <laughs> so here's our bracelet it's the zoe band yeah awesome. so zoe means life in greek and um yeah we just wanted it really to be you know a, be a be a symbol um just to really connect people back ground people in this and then as we stated before, you know, all 100% of proceeds get funneled back into the island to purchase aid. So, yeah, we really wanted to, like, unite, unite people together um, mm. in, this, in a sign of solidarity. It's amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, the, the last thing I want to I close with is, is really creating a sense of, um, of purpose and, and a way to help and give back, especially through when we band together. So can you guys type, if you have the ability, I think you should in the comment box, your Instagram handle and your website. Um, yeah. And also uh, you, you usually offer trips to Greece. So if yeah. you could t talk a little bit about when that will hopefully resume, assuming that, you know, the, the world moves towards some sense of normalcy in the near future. So you wanna talk about the trips? I'll type in the website. Yeah, All right. <laughs> it's probably pretty close to our face. So yeah, really the, the trips were just a way like we were saying in America, I mean, our, our view, unfortunately, of, of refugees is so negative. Our, our leaders in power right now um, paint this picture that is not a positive one. And we really wanted to bring people to, to show people what we experience, which is, you know, why we spend every day doing this work and why we think it's so important, why we think these people deserve um, attention and a chance. So the, the trips were just a way really to bring awareness, to bring small groups out there, to show them actually what's happening, to see how they can help, to get bright minds in there, to, to innovate, to see the changes that, um, you know, we could make. And at times, the refugee crisis can just be such a heavy space. It can feel like such a heavy lift because conceptually, yeah, there's, there is a lot of people and there's a lot to be done. But by breaking it up, you know, when you're on the ground, it, like all you do is make progress. You and know, all you like, do is meet people who inspire you yeah. and, and draw those connections. I mean, as cliche as it is, like it's just people like you and me, you yeah. know, people wanting education, people wanting a safe place for yeah. their family. And um, yeah, the, the trip that we took last, last year, it was um, so successful. Everyone is now involved in some way and has continued to stay involved and help however they can. And um yeah, we had we had great hopes to continue carrying out those trips this spring and, and fall. Um, obviously, with COVID, Amazing. they're postponed, but we really look forward to doing those again. Awesome. I'm glad to hear those. We'll we'll be back. Yeah. Um, were you guys able to to post that in the in the chat there? I think we did. It looks like yeah, it I, went put, I put the website on the website. Perfect. There should be a trips tab. Excellent. Yeah, and just reach um, out to us. I run our social, and we're really small biz. Just us. Yeah. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and on that note, this video will be available afterwards for, uh, for, for viewing on both the Global Fashion Exchange platform and a few others. So we'll, we'll share all those details with you as well. Um, and I also want to thank GFX, EcoShaker, and everyone that put this week together. And then uh, Zoe and Xander, yet again, for you guys coming on and, and having this conversation with us. It's greatly appreciated, especially so early in the morning. Yeah. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much for having us, Devin. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Take care.